Hey guys, today we are going to do something just a little bit different when it comes to lure making. I've been a guy that I always like to try to do something that's just a little bit different than what somebody else is doing. That's why I got into making lures. When I got into painting, I liked the S-crank style. The reason is, not a lot of people throw it because if you go buy an S-crank lure, they're about $19. Not a lot of people are going to spend that kind of money. So I like this. It's a little bit different than the 2.5 or the 1.5 that everybody works with all the time. I like the holographics. You don't see a lot of people using the holographics. I like making my own chatterbaits. I like to do things a little different and a little unique when it comes to making a chatterbait. And in a few weeks, I'm going to do a video showing how I make some of my different chatterbaits. Topwater, I love using a wake bait. Always love something doing a little bit different than somebody else is doing because the odds are a little better that, hey, the fish hasn't seen that or hasn't seen it that often. Well, today we're going to do something again. Now, inline spinners. Now, Bob and I have done some trout fishing when the Game and Park stock our local lake with trout. We use the little 16th ounce or 32nd ounce inline spinner. But just the other day we talked about it and I said, when's the last time we used an inline spinner while bass fishing? I mean, yeah, when we're trout fishing, we accidentally catch a bass every once in a while about like this on that little spinner. But when have we ever really gone out bass fishing and using a big inline spinner? And neither one of us could think of when we did it. So I thought, well, you know what we need to do? We need to make some inline spinners. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a large size inline spinner that you'd use for bass fishing. So let's go to the workbench and we'll get started. All right guys, I got all the basic components laid out here. Various things I picked up. I kind of messed around here with one just to show you what I'm basically looking at. A body with a, this one happens to have a Colorado blade on it. Spin around. Don't have any hooks or anything like that on it as of yet. Basically what I purchased, and almost everything here came from Lure Parts Online. Link in the description. We ended up needing a wire. I have a 4 inch, it's .026 inch diameter wire. It's got a loop on one end. Left open, I went with a 4 inch. You want a little extra wire in here, and I figured make it plenty long. So we did that. As I said, I want them big. I had purchased some willow blades to make some spinner baits a while back. So I've got some of these. One of these days we might even get into one of the real big ones. So, but for now we're going to just kind of do something with this one here. I wanted to have some weight to them. They're going to be big. I wanted them to have some weight. So what I have here is a 10 pack. This is 1.15 inches long, one quarter ounce lead. I got a quarter ounce lead. Again, lure parts online. You can buy these painted or buy them unpainted. I did them unpainted. And the reason was I didn't want to buy 10 red ones, 10 white ones, 10 yellow ones. I figured I can do this and I can paint myself. So what I did, you can see I got the wires on them because hang on a second. Well, over here. Basically, I just used my powder paint. I happen to have some powder paint on hand. I used the heat gun. And I basically set them in like this, heated them up, dipped them in the powder paint, and I ended up with them that way. You could take the paint you're using to paint your fishing lures. You could use that. That would probably work. So, but here I have them with the powder paint. When I got done with that, uh, I didn't use the two-part hard coat. I didn't want to use that because I didn't want to get it into the holes. So what I ended up doing was I had a spray can of a clear finish that you put over the top. I just sprayed that on. In the case of this one right here, there's the lead. doesn't look a lot different. I sprayed this one with my chrome Rust-Oleum can and sprayed that one to come up with silver. And again, sprayed it with the top coat. But it's really, should be pretty simple to put the whole thing together. So let's get a weight, we'll get some beads, a clevis, and we'll get started and put one together. 
All right, let's see about putting one together. Start out with a wire. First decision you have to make. Do you want, we got a, a circle at one end, this end's gonna be open to put our stuff. Which end is gonna be where you tie your line? You're gonna end up tying it down here or you're gonna tie it here. For now, we're gonna tie it up here. This is where we're gonna use for our line tie on this one. So we're gonna make something like this. So let's just start out with a bead. And this, this one, these are probably plastic. I also purchased some metal beads. That would probably get it a little heavier. All right, next thing we're gonna have to have is our willow blade. And then the, the small, I call this a clevis. I'm not really sure what it is. That's what I call it anyway. And we'll get that. Did I get it on the right direction? Yes, I did. Got to be careful. You make sure you get that sitting the right way. You don't want it upside down. All right. Now, let's go back with a couple more beads. Got to keep looking to make sure I keep this in the camera for you. Throw another couple beads on there. Now, let's do our yellow weight. We'll run that through. We got our quarter ounce weight. And then we're going to come back one more bead. Yeah, as soon as I find the hole to get it in, there we will. There we go. All right. That is our basic component to the spinner bait right there. Now, here comes the important part. This one, I messed up. All right. I messed that up because there's not enough space. And when you look at these, there's always space for this stuff to slide around. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to take a small vice grips I got, and I'm going to clamp this right on the wire like that. Now, everything's held in. It's tight, but when I make my loop down here now, and I take this off, this will be my space where this can move back and forth. And this is going to be where it gets a little more difficult. So we're going to have to get a few more tools here. All right, I kind of want to move everything back out of the way here a little bit so get a little more room to see. We're going to, I've got another vice grips. i got a small nail in. What we're going to do initially, I don't even need that, we're going to kind of bend this to the side a little. Because I want to start making my loop. Grab a hold of it with my needle nose here, and I'm going to come back around. And this is where we're going to start getting our loop. And this is going to be, i got to get this where you can make sure you guys can see it. This is where it's going to start getting a little tough, because trying to get that loop, and you may have to, it will not be perfectly round when you start. All right. And if you can see, I grabbed second vice script here. Kind of a little deal, but I got it now put around there. So I got that in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let the first one go. All right? Because I'm not going to lose anything now. But now is when I want to bring my wire around. And now is when I'm going to grab it here and now is when we're really going to twist our wire in here tight around and here's where you'll have to kind of you may have to work this around and make it a little more like a circle it's going to be a little tough to work with we got our end sticking out I'm just going to come back with my cutter do a little cut it's sticking up a little bit so I'm just going to, yeah, I've got to do it the other way around so I get a grip on it. Grab it here. I'm going to do a little smash down there. And sometimes you may have to work with that a little more to get it down good. But there we go. We got our body. As you can see, I've got my gap. So this will move up and down. Shouldn't have any problem with this. But now all we need to do, we need to put a hook on this. 
You could have put the hook in here first, but I got another idea I want to try. And that meant I had to do it this way, and we're going to have to use a split ring. So hang on. All right, we're ready to put the hook on. I have some hooks right here. Got these again, lure parts. I got these. These are uh, the VMC, a number four VMC round bend hook, and the split rings. I use the same split rings on the crankbaits. It always helps to have a split ring pliers when you're working on this stuff. And I gotta keep trying to remember to keep it far enough out in front so you can see what I'm doing. What I'm gonna do here, basically here, we're just gonna take, we're gonna slip the split ring onto the loop. Come back with the needle nose. Now, when I do this, I don't put them all the way on. All right, I just got it started. Now normally, now's when we're gonna come back slip the hook in, but I want to do something. Now, I was at just today at Walmart looking at large spinner baits that look to be about this size, and usually they buy MEPS or other companies like that, and gosh, I didn't realize they're like five, six, seven dollars, depending on the size. I didn't realize inline spinners were that high. Some do have a hook, just plain hook like that, works perfectly fine. Some have the hair on the hooks. I had thought about doing that, buying some of the treble hooks with hair on them, but I thought, you know what, I'm bass fishing, and I'm going to do this for bass, so I got another idea. What about a rubber skirt? And this is why the hook didn't go on to begin with, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the rubber skirt, I'm going to hold it upside down, I'm going to take the eye of that hook, and I'm going to push it right down through there like that, Shove that all the way down. Now I'm going to come back here with my split ring. Let's grab a hold of this again. Take that treble hook. And I got to get it down where I can get to it down there. Push that on there. There we go. And now we just roll it around a bit. And we're done. And there we go. I got an inline spinner with a rubber skirt. Is that going to work? I have no idea. But you know what? I enjoyed making stuff. Look, there's two kinds of people. There's the kind that likes to do this. Likes to go out in your shop. You like to mess around. You like to paint these. You like to go out and paint this stuff. You like to make spinner baits or, or make your own chatter baits. And there's people that just doing, I, I got too much stuff going in this world. I'm just, I'm, I'll go to Walmart and I'll pay six bucks for that. I don't have any problem doing that. I don't have time to make it. If you don't have time, you're going to spend the six bucks. This is not going to interest. But you know what? If you like doing something like this, I don't know, something just a little bit different. Like I said, I'm really... <laughs> I want to make a big one. I still want to make one of these big ones. That is, a, that is a big blade right there. I'll tell you what, that thing, you can see that goes almost almost across my fingers there. I want to make one like that. I'm going to try a few more. And this year I'm going to try fishing with a few of these. See if we can catch a few fish. Well, there I went, guys. There's an inline spinner. Now, again, I used a quarter ounce on the lead weight. I could have used metal beads instead of plastic. By the time you add the willow blade, if you'd use that real big willow blade, you're probably looking at a 3 8 ounce, or you could even get up to a half ounce lure. Now I understand for the guys that are pike fishing or musky fishing and that, hey, we use that kind of stuff all the time. But not a lot of the bass fishermen talk about inline spinners. So if the bass fishermen aren't talking about inline spinners, that means they're not using inline spinners. That means maybe you can go to the lake and throw something that's just a little bit different than everybody else is throwing. Hey, thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to the channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.